stay tuned because for the next 60 minutes, Motorsports Unlimited is on the air. Hi, I'm Jerry Bryant, and these are the lovely ladies of Motorsports. And all this hour, we're going to have 60 minutes of action-packed excitement. All kinds of exciting things will happen. And we got the famous Bill Wilt, and we got all kinds of other good stuff that's happening all this hour. Motorsports Unlimited, 60 minutes of nonstop action. So let's go to the studio right now, huh? Hi everybody, I'm Janine Lauschat and this is the 1138th edition of Motorsports Unlimited. The winter of 2008-2009 is over. Unfortunately, the nice weather isn't here yet, but before you know it, the racetracks will be opening as well as the marinas, summer car shows and the rest. You've got to get your stuff ready and we're here to give you a push. Let's start with racetracks. To do it, we're turning back the calendar 10 years and taking you to Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. Before you know it, this will be happening. That's right, folks. Rock'em, sock'em, 800 horsepower, ground-pounding, earth-shaking IRA sprint car action. We're taking you to Beaver Dam, Wisconsin to check out the sprinters on a track that gives them room to run. It's the Dodge County Fairgrounds Half Mile Clay Oval. Fast, smooth, and tacky, it's a natural for sprint cars. Let's join Bill and the girls in the pits and find out who's hot. in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, and I'm going to resist the urge to start limping because uh, unless you've been watching every single episode of Motorsports Unlimited, you probably don't remember that Beaver Dam, Wisconsin is where my motorcycle racing career ended in 1975 with a very serious injury at the, uh, and I am surprised, there are two fairgrounds here, there are two tracks, not one, and uh, I don't remember if it was this track or the other track because it was a long, long time ago. So I'm not going to limp tonight as a reminder of my injuries, but I am going to explain why we're here. We are about three hours uh, north of Chicago right now in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, and this is the Dodge County Fairgrounds. And I've got some fellas here that I want you to meet because they're the reason that we're up here tonight, and you are. I'm Bill Hensley. From? Uh, Lake Villa, Illinois. And? I'm Raymond Hensley from Antioch, Illinois. And you're obviously the driver because you got the suit on. Yes, sir. And you're obviously the guy that signs the checks because you look yeah. worried. <laughs> <laughs> He's the reason that I'm here tonight because Bill Hensley called me up and he says, I've seen the shows that you've done from Wilmot uh, Speedway in Wilmot, Wisconsin, and we love Wilmot Speedway and we're glad that it's there because it's a close race tax to Chicago and the only uh, place in the Chicagoland area where you can see a weekly uh, sprint car show. So it's absolutely wonderful. But it's only a quarter mile long, about right, quarter mile? Yeah, it's a little bigger than a quarter mile, like a third mile. Okay, but small for a sprinter. Small, very small. So Bill, the dad over here, he calls me up and he says, Bill, you just gotta show the audience the sprint cars on tracks where they were made to run. And we've got this Dodge County Fairgrounds thing coming up in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. Why don't you come on up here and cover a sprint car race on a big track? Have I got it about right you so far? You got it right, you got it right, Bill. What kind of speeds are we gonna run on this track tonight? About 130. Hold on just a minute. Hold on. Let me come down here. We've got arena stuck all the way down at this end, prettying up this corner of the car. They tell me that this car, take a look at that. Look at the steering wheel and all that. Look at the area for the driver and all that, right? They tell me tonight on the straightaways they're going to run 130 miles an hour. What do you think? It doesn't look like it. You want to try it? No. <laughs> no, I don't think so. This is pretty awesome stuff, and they're right because we've explained sprint cars on Motorsports Unlimited before, but we've got a, a job to do. Luda, you've seen sprint cars, right? Yes. And what do you think of sprint cars? This is nice, cool. Awesome? Awesome. Awesome. Michelle, you don't know anything, you don't know what sprint cars are, you don't know anything about it? A little bit. Well, I'm going to tell you something. What sprint cars are, and you guys have to help me a little bit here, the way I always explain them is 800 horsepower, ground pounding. Have I got it about right? Yeah, pretty close. These are outrageous 800 horsepower beasts. Look at these small little cars. You wouldn't believe that they have this kind of horsepower, and they're only about, what, 13, 1400? Uh, we're down about 1150, 1200. No, you're under 1200 pounds. Yeah. Under 1,200 pounds, pulling eight, pardon me? That's where the money comes in. Okay, explain that. When you say things on Motorsports Unlimited, you got to explain it. Why is it costly to get light? All lightweight stuff. Titanium, magnesium, all cost money. You can't use uh, magnesium. There's a uh, magnesium brake rotor, but the uh, rest of it is like titanium and even the bolts. Even the bolts are titanium? Yeah. 
So this gets very costly, getting these cars under 1,200 pounds, over 800 horsepower, capable of running down these straightaways at 130 plus mile an hour, and guess what? They're not on the racetracks by themselves, are you? No, we've got 20 other people who want to win this thing too. You're out there in a crowd. Yeah. Okay, tell us how you're doing with your career. How's things going so far this season? Please so remember, far, this was taped 10 years this. ago. Hi, I'm Mei Chin, fun, nice wondering how Ray's too. racing well, career you, is going right now. I've said so many times that uh, motorsport is one of those things. If all you like doing is winning, find another sport because you're going to be unhappy a lot of times. You better like just doing it. Yeah, it's true. It's, it's very expensive and it's just a hobby. It's just something that we do for fun. We have a regular full-time job that we work on and you know everybody here is like a big family with the IRA, the Interstate racing association and it's just they, they all have jobs too it's just a, something to do on the weekends to have fun well that's right folks let me remind you that this is steve sinclair's event tonight this is the ira this is steve sinclair's event we've had him on the show many many times matter of fact just a couple months ago we introduced you to daryl dodd uh and talked all about ira racing we got to talk about a couple of things yes oh he's pointing it out i'm sorry now future winner when did you win the well, last time we was up here you want you guys want a feature yeah and you're just doing this as a hobby and you want a feature? Yeah. Anybody that can win three out of four here gets $10,000. It's a bonus. That sounds like more than a hobby to me. Well, it's a fun hobby. Well, I'd say that's a fun hobby. <laughs> Chuck, if you would, if you haven't already done so, get a shot of the sign there, make sure we know what we're talking about. We're talking about a feature winner here in sprint car racing. Tell us about the car, Bill. What have we got? You better talk to him. About He's the man. Tell, tell us about the man. car. It's a, it's a 99 Maxim, which Maxim builds a really good chassis. It's a standard tube deal. Uh, it's it's our own design on our motor. We we buy the uh, the parts and assemble it ourselves, uh, and did a lot of researching on what to do with the parts that we use. And it seems that we've got something tied together that really seems to work really good. Tell us about the engine. Uh, it's 410 cubic inches. Um, it's aluminum block, ultra lightweight block, and uh, aluminum heads with an angler fuel injection system on it, which is like a 2 and 11 sixteenths butterflies with a with a mechanical fuel injection set up with nozzles instead of like an electronic fuel injection with little injectors. And the pressure of the fuel just sprays right into the cylinders, I guess. And well, let's talk about let's talk about the hard part about sprint cars now. Well, I don't we know. Can go on with that motor for the rest of well, the night. And the reason, unfortunately, and, we, we and are trying now. And the reason we can't go on about the motor the rest of the night is what I want the audience to know. We're talking about thirty, thirty-five thousand dollars a pop. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, and here's the hard part about sprint cars, Michelle. Come on down here, and. Leave him here, you come on down here too. Keep going, something we've got to explain. We've got, Irina has never seen the sprint cars before. Please step right in here. Irina has never seen it, right between the two girls, please. Irina has never seen the sprint cars before either. And uh, I want to make sure that they understand one thing. We're talking about 800 horsepower. We're talking about 30 to $35,000 engines. And guess what? You can't stop these cars. Once you start them and get them rolling, you can't stop them. Mm, yeah, no, no. You know what a clutch is? You probably don't drive stick shift, do you? No. You drive stick shift? I have, yes. You know I that you need a clutch, is, right? Yes. Yeah, no clutch. No, there's no clutch. It's just a once, drive. Once you put these, what they do is they'll stop like this, just the way they are right now. They put it in direct drive. A push truck pushes them. The rear wheels just kind of skid along until it overwhelms the, 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 the uh, torque resistance of the motor. Starts the motor up. Once it starts the motor up, this thing just keeps going. You can't stop. No, well, you can stop. Yeah, but you have you to pull it out of gear. You have to pull it out of gear. And right. then you can't put it back in gear. No, not. And then you have to do the same process, procedure in order to start it again. <laughs> so this is going to be an exciting thing to see at 130, 135 miles an hour down the straights, 20 cars in a bunch, and really can't stop them. No, you can't stick the clutch in and coast to the side. <laughs> right, right. We, this, this, this. You can do the Flintstone thing. <laughs> you, 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 well said. She says you can do the Flintstone things. What do you think? Yeah, well, we actually have a really good brake system on this car, so we can slow the car down really fast. Uh, yes, you can slow down, but you can't stop. No, you can't stop. Okay, stay put. Let me come over here. This is the dad, and when we're talking about sprint cars, we're talking, as I've said before, about so much power and so little weight. Can't really stop these things on their own. Are you sure you want your son out there doing these things? <laughs> My wife said when he started in 93, she said, what are you trying to do, kill him? <laughs> and I said, well, if that's the way he's going to go, that's the way he's going to go. No, I wouldn't feel guilty over it if he really if he got hurt bad, Bill, because that's what he wants to do. Yeah, and if you want a feature already, this is some good, this is a good well, driver. I want a couple of features. Well, this isn't small potatoes. This is the big thing. In any event, we're starting to get engine sounds in the back, folks. That's what today's show is about. Once again, we are showing you for the first time on Motorsports Unlimited, we're going to show you sprint cars and what these guys think is the natural and proper environment for sprint cars, meaning a really big track where these things can really stretch their legs. 
And the only thing I'm concerned about, I felt a couple of drops of rain. Don't even think about rain, Bill. We want to see these cars you're so excited about run. Matter of fact, the IRA has a mascot that prevents rain. Look. Would you believe it? I got the officials to actually sit down long enough for an interview. This is it. This is the entire IRA bunch. That's the Interstate Racing Association. The people who put these events on. You've met this fellow on Motorsports Unlimited several times before, but please reintroduce yourself to the audience. Steve Sinclair, president of the IRA Sprint Cars. Okay, what are we doing here tonight, Steve? Tonight is round number two of a $10,000 bonus challenge we have for the IRA Outlaw Sprints at the Dodge County Fairgrounds. Explain what that means. Any driver that can win out of three out of four events here at Dodge County this year gets a $10,000 bonus on top of the $2,000 a night he'd be winning anyway. So you run at this track fairly often? This is probably our home track, four times a year. Oh, four times, that is a lot. Uh, and where else do you run? We did this before, but a lot of folks don't watch every week. Uh, we have 30 races, 17 different tracks in a five-state area. For example, next week we're at Plymouth, Wisconsin. We run Hales Corners, Wilmot, Knoxville, Iowa this year. Um, Superior, it goes far north to Superior. Yeah, Wilmot. And Wilmot, yeah. Now, let me ask you this. Would it be fair to say that what you guys are is a regional version of the World of Outlaw Sprint Cars? Absolutely, yes. Okay, because folks, this is something you should understand. When I first heard about this group and what they were doing, I presumed that we were talking about a limited engine, something not up to what the uh, world of outlaws. And boy, was I surprised the first time I saw him at Kankakee Speedway with the front wheels in the air coming off the corners. And I walked in there and I said, no, we're exactly the same as the world of outlaws. We just don't drive all over the country, just five states. Many of these drivers ran with the outlaws at Hales Corners a couple weeks back. And as a matter of fact, the 88 car of Mike Frost outqualified Steve Kinzer and Sammy Swindell that night. Is that right? Now that is a big deal. Now before I spend all the time talking to you, I want to talk to the other guys because I really, guys, think about this question. I'm going to get your names and where you're from and I want you to explain to me how we accept this guy Sinclair. He's looking more and more like a yuppie every time I see him. <laughs> Let me start down here. You are. Jim Stout. I'm from Lindenhurst, Illinois. And your role? Uh, director of competition, also a board member. And you are? Bill Irwin from Johnsburg, Illinois. I run the pits. Don't run away. Come down to this end. And you are? Dick Simons from Watertown, Wisconsin. I'm secretary of the IRA. Well, you do all the work. I try to. I would have thought they would give that to the girl. Well, she won't take it, so I guess I'll have to I do don't it. blame her. And you are? I'm Dick Witt. I'm the official starter for the uh, IRA Sprint Car Series. And where are you from? I'm from Jackson, Wisconsin. Okay, and finally, and we normally start with the pretty girls, but I wanted to end over here because of the beautiful dog she's got. You are? I'm Linda Witt. I'm a pace car driver for IRA. And this is my pace, the pace truck dog. And what's her name? Lady. This is Lady. Okay, I've got a question. How come you didn't end up being a secretary? Um, I work in an office all week long, so in the weekend I want to do something else. Enough is enough. Enough is enough, yes. Okay, the question about Steve Sinclair looking like a yuppie, that was strictly rhetorical. I'm not going to ask you to comment at it all, but the, I mean, you see this hair on the back here? What is all that? He looks too much like my son. Yeah, I mean, what is this? He's young. What? from him. Well, he wants to be a young Ted Johnson, you know. Is, is that what it is? I think what? so. The hair? His boys have the same haircut. You let him do this? Yes. Okay, they let him do it. There's nothing I can do. Steve, I guess there's nothing I can do about it. I'm trying, buddy. I think they are too, actually. Okay, uh, you know the reason we're here tonight? Because Bill Hensley called me and said, please, please, you've got to put these sprint cars on a big track where you can show the folks how they run. So we're going to try it tonight. Okay. You won't believe this place, Bill. They're probably, as a matter of fact, they have a radar gun set up on the front straightaway. I'd be shocked if they're not doing 140 down the chutes. That fast, you think? Yes. Well, I'll tell you something, folks. We are really looking forward to this. This is going to be fun. And I want to tell you one other thing. This is not that long of a drive from Chicago. It really isn't. It's about three hours. And Luda, where's Luda? Luda, this is Luda. This is all new to you. You were saying on the way up here, this is beautiful, beautiful country. Yes. Nice drive. Yeah, I like it. Very, very beautiful around. Everything. Very, very beautiful. Okay, folks, we're going to get going now because we got to let these guys get to work, and we've got a lot of work to do. We want you to meet some of these drivers before we actually get to the action footage. And guess what? The rain I was worried about before seems to have passed by, so I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. Of course the rain passed, Bill. The IRA mascot is very reliable. Now, join me as I meet one of the top IRA racers and learn more about spring car racing. <laughs> anything about spring cars but Bill tells me that these guys know everything about spring cars and uh, I'm gonna get their names. What's your name sir and where are you from? My name is Dan Ostrack. I'm from Winthrop Harbor, Illinois. And what's your name? I'm Mike Frost from Zion, Illinois. And you sir? Bob Punzel from Salem, Wisconsin. Bill, could you help me out? 
Okay, we've got some real excitement here. You just step right in there, Irina. Real excitement here. If you know anything about sprint car r racing at all, and if you're from the planet Earth, you know the name Steve Kinzer. Steve Kinzer, and I'm sure you guys won't be offended if I say Steve Kinzer might be Mr. Sprint Car Racing of the World. And guess what? We've got the man here from the IRA that out-qualified Steve Kinzer at the last race. Have I, if I haven't got it right, say so. Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay, tell us about it. That does not sound like an easy task. To, first of all, just going and running with the World of Outlaw Sprint Cars is a tough deal. Some guys would consider it a huge success just to qualify for the program, let alone to out-qualify a Kinzer. Yeah, we've got quite a few guys in our IRA deal that could probably out-qualify them. It's just a lot of it's luck of the draw. If you don't draw good to get out early, it's... You How kinda, important is uh, that? It's real important. So if they do that here too? They're going to draw tonight to see who goes out and qualifies first? Yeah, they do every show. That's not as important on the bigger tracks, but the short, slick joints, if you don't get out early, the track's usually gone. Okay, he's using all kinds of slang here, and we are trying to craft our program for the general public. We want regular folks to understand. When you say the track is gone, what do you mean? Well, it... Because it's obviously still there. Most of the moisture goes out of it and it starts slicking off, and it's a lot harder to get hold of. Okay, that's what we're talking about. When you see sprint cars run, I'm telling you something. Chuck, show the audience these tires, the size of these tires. Trust me, they need every bit of tire that they've got to put the 800 plus horsepower that they have to the ground. And it doesn't work at all if they're on a slippery, dusty racetrack. It's impossible to get a hold of the racetrack. So if they water the track, get it nice and tacky. The first guys that go out to qualify have this advantage of a very tacky racetrack and set a real low time. Unfortunately, if I understand it right, the rule says you can't water it after you start qualifying. Uh, they do every now and then if it gets real dusty, but they usually go ahead and let qualify and get over with before they put any more on it. So, the guys that go out first have a big advantage for, for qualifying. Now, before we run out of time here, because I know you guys are busy, Chuck, show the audience the car, tell us about your car, or if you're the wrong guy, tell me which one of your guys can do it. Uh, it's a 99 Eagle chassis, uh, uses shaver motors. Okay, when the motor, I'm assuming 410 cubic inches, all aluminum, titanium parts? Yes. Once again, I'd like you as one of the top guys to explain. We've got this girl has never seen a sprint car race, doesn't know what one is. This girl has never seen a sprint car race, doesn't know what one is. Uh, how do you explain that once you start these things, you can't stop them? Well, they're a direct drive. You haven't got a clutch or anything, so once you lock it in gear and it's pushed off, the only way you can get it stops is knock it out of gear. And then you can't put it back in gear? No, you got to be pushed off again after that. So if you're out in a crowd of 20 there, going around perhaps at 130 miles an hour down the straightaway, and somebody crashes, you don't want to pop it out of gear. You're going to try to avoid it or what have you, but you can't really stop. No, you got to try to go around. If you stop, you'll get pushed off and go to the tail. Okay, real quick, and we'll let you go. Your role with the team? Uh, I'm uh, just a mechanic working on a car. Don't say just a mechanic. That's so important. We can't. This guy can't be what he is without you. Am I right? Oh, yeah. And well, your role with the car? I uh, set the tires most of the time, the air pressure on them. Okay, you just set the stagger on them? Yeah, we talk to each other and see what kind of stagger we want to run on different tracks and where we want to have the tires positioned. Okay, this kind of a track, you don't have to give anything away if you don't want to. Our audience knows we've talked about stagger a lot on Motorsports Unlimited. Our audience knows the flatter the track, the more stagger you have to run, the better the bank, the less stagger you have to run. And the compromise, down the straightaway, too much stagger is going to slow you down, not enough stagger, you can't go around the corners. About how many inches of stagger you look for at a track like this? Depending on how wet it is, usually around 15 or 16. That much? Oh yeah. And how does that compare with Wilmot? 18 or 19. More at Wilmot? Yeah, you got to have a lot more at Wilmot. And you don't have to worry about long straightaways there? Uh, no. That's the reason you can't. you still got to have the stagger here because the corner is just flat. Because the, yeah, because the corners are flat. Yeah. Okay, we're not going to take any more of your time. Once again, Mike Frost, the guy that went with the World of Outlaw Sprint Car guys and out-qualified a Kinzer, this is not an easy task. We will watch tonight with enthusiasm to see how well you do with the IRA. And folks, don't go away. We've got a lot more to show you. A lot more it's right, Bill. Let Joe Michelle S. She meet the RRA point leader. As I understand it, folks, we have the current IRA point leader with us. And your name is? Donnie Gaden. And you are, where are you from? We're from Kewaskum, Wisconsin. Okay, well, Bill. We are uh, working with an extreme disadvantage here tonight. It is so loud. You can't hear this because of the special microphones. We've got engines running all over the place. This is the current IRA point leader. And for once, I get a chance to ask the most important question to me because I'm kind of the television voice of, uh, of the IRA in that I do their television commercials. And I say over and over again, 
Joe Rowe, Donnie Gaden, and I'm never quite sure how to say it, so for the record, give it to me exactly. How do you pronounce your name? You're right, Donnie Gaden's the way to go. Donnie Gaden, so I'm doing it right. Tell us about your car, Donnie. Uh, we got a 99 j j chassis this year. We got a new setup this year. We're, it's working good. We had some good luck. We're leading in points. Got a bunch of wins under our belt, and uh, if we can pull, have a good rest of the season, we'll do okay. Have you had any championships before? Obviously, you're one of the big stars, and that's why uh, that, uh, Steve Sinclair always has me mention your name, along with Joe Rowe and a few others uh, in the commercials. Uh, have you had some championships before? Uh, five years ago, we ran Super Modifieds and had two championships back-to-back, -back. and then when we, when we got into IRA Sprint Cars, we finished second the last two years to Joe Rowe, and, but we had the same amount of wins as he did. So if, if we can run up there and finish the top three in points, we'll be happy. So you right now are ahead of Joe Rowe. Yeah, he's having a tough season, so t tough season. So I believe he's like 15th in points or something like that. But uh, Kim Mock, Raymond Hensley, they're running good this year. And like I said, uh, it should be a good year. Okay, tell us about this track tonight. And we're trying to, our audience, as far as sprint cars, has only seen Kankakee Speedway and uh, Wilmot Speedway. Contrast this track to those tracks. I would say this track is probably double the size of Kankakee. You're going to hit top speeds of a sprint car probably anywhere between 130, 140 miles an hour down straight away. I would say you're going to see some probably 18 second laps, 17 second laps tonight. Is this the kind of a track do you, that you like or do you prefer the shorter tracks? I like all tracks. Uh, big tracks are big horsepower motors. Uh, we got a good ho horsepower motor this year with a Klein engine. I believe uh, we can run good on short and long. Now as far as the engine, I'm presuming it's just the difference in engine builders that you're all kind of running 410 all aluminum titanium part motors? Yeah, we have a cubic inch rule, so it's 410 is everybody's, but everybody's got different inside parts and lightweight parts and different combinations. Last question, Donnie. You're obviously a very young guy and you've got lots of racing experience. Where do you want to go in racing? Ultimately, if all the good things happen to Donnie Gaten, where do you end up? We're going to try and hit some TNN shows this year. We'll probably plan on running with the World All Laws next year. Okay, so ultimately World of Outlaws or ultimately Winston Cup or IndyCar? Just the Outlaws. Okay, my friend, the noise is getting wild. We can't hear anything. Don't go away. We're coming right back. We were able to run over to the fence and watch some of the sprinters qualify. Wow. Let's join Luda as she meets a man she just watched on the track. <laughs> this man driving. He's so good. What's your name, sir? My name is Kim Mock. I'm from uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin, down on the state line. I'm only now see you driving. You're so good driving, so quickly. Thank you. You'll help me? Thank you very much. <laughs> you know what you wanted to ask him. What were you going to ask him? About time, maybe. <laughs> the question was, we were watching out there qualifying. It looked like a couple of very hot runners. And this guy, by the way, is obviously one of the hot runners, because in a moment, you'll see, He's got two cars, so he must be a hot runner. Uh, it looked like you ran flat out all the way around, but maybe not. Did you breathe it at all? Well, I, I don't think I really lifted. I think what happened, I threw the car a little bit getting into the corner, and the wing takes the motor down. So that was the sound you're hearing. A lot of these guys are probably running flat-footed with the smaller motors, but when they get into the corners, the wing pulls the motors down, so it sounds like you're lifting, but they're really not. I get it. I, now, do you understand that, Michelle? So they're not really lifting. The, actually, the wing will pull it down that hard. Yeah, the wing is like a, a parachute. It air brakes the car down so you don't go through the corners as fast. It keeps you stable. Okay, tell us about your car. It's, uh, it's This one here I have today is a two-year-old chassis with a brand new motor. It's got about six nights on that Osborne Trucking, my major sponsor, put together for us a motor program this year. And in return, his son is out there qualifying right now in one of my backup cars. I was going to ask you, is this a protege? Uh, you know, down the future, you know, I might be in you know, this sport another four or five years, and I'd like to take my equipment and stay in the sport, so I got somebody I'm breaking in, and as long as he don't start beating me, he can stay in the car. I'm going to tell you something. It's pretty hard. How old are you? Because you don't look old enough to be thinking about that. No, I'm 43 right now, but what happens when you start getting older, if I don't take the chances I need to win, I don't want to be in the car. But it's still almost impossible to leave the sport. Oh, yeah, I'll never leave the sport. I got a guy that's 18 now running my backup car. My son is seven, so I hope to retire doing this with the sponsors behind me. Okay, a couple little things we want to talk about here first. We're trying to help the girls understand sprint car racing and at the same time help our audience understand. This, of course, is IRA Sprint Car Racing, which we have already identified is a regional version of the World of Outlaws Sprint Cars. Same car, same engine, same money and all that, just don't have to travel all around the country. What I want the girls to understand is because unfortunately this kind of racing doesn't get the kind of sports news coverage that it ought to get. 
What do you guys do after you get done racing tonight? Are you done for the year? Oh, no, we, uh, we'll go back home. Some of us top teams that have a little few, few dollars behind us, we'll run extra shows during the week. Donnie Gaden, the current point leader, probably runs two or three shows a week plus IRA events. So the guys that have some financial backing, we go on the road and we run what we can so we're better at this sport. So you literally on the road all the time? Oh, yeah, about two, three days a week for sure. You know, I, I work four or five days, but a lot of times in the summer, it's nothing to take off uh, five or six days a month plus, you know, the weekends too. All right, you're very articulate, so if you don't mind, I'm going to press you just a little bit more. Chuck, if you can, broaden your shot. Show the audience a look here. It's hot tonight. Have a few raindrops in the air. There's dust everywhere. Of course, the Thunder of Engines is just awesome. But give us, give our ladies here, a, we want them to understand this community. You guys are like a family. This is not like going to a job for you. You're so addicted to this that you want to pass it on. Yeah. Uh, if you notice, a lot of crew chiefs that are most of these cars are previous racers or teams that kind of went belly up because of the financial end of it. Like I've got a guy that used to race on his own, a very good racer, is my crew chief now. And everybody has been in a sport somewhere that's on a team now. And it's just, and you always get a few guys that come in new, but it takes them years to get responsibilities. Okay, very quickly, we'll let you, I got a couple more things, so I'm not going to quickly let you go. Explain to them how the program works. I've just told them that earlier when we were here, they had the other cars out there packing the track. Then they let you guys out there for hot laps, and now you're going out there one at a time to qualify. What is the purpose of qualifying, and what is the objective of tonight? Well, qualifying takes the slowest cars and actually puts them on a tail. The more inexperienced guys don't have much laps. But the fastest car in all the races tonight will be starting sixth in the races. And the reason for that is, when the 24th slowest car in time will start on a pole of the heat race, which gives everybody an opportunity to transfer through. And let's just say the qu quicker cars don't make the show, well, they'll start front row of the B, which gives them a reward back for being quick. And the objective tonight is to win the feature. And to get to the feature, you have to qualify well, then work your way through the heats. Or if I don't have it right. Yeah. No, you have to. There's no letting off. You just can't go out there and qualify top one or two and just take it easy all night. You have to race all night to get your spot in the main event. Does that help you, Ms. Michelle? So the faster cars don't start in the front? No, okay. they start in the third row, and that rewards the guys that are a little bit slower so they have a chance to win also. Okay, okay and the reason for this, by the way, here's the dilemma all the time. The promoter, the person that puts the races on is trying to get the fans to come and watch. He wants to put on a show. The racers want to be rewarded for their racing. So we arrive at a compromise. Ideally, for the promoter, he would like to see the fastest cars start all the way in the back and the slowest all the way in the front because it's the most exciting watching the fast cars go through. These guys get mad because there's not enough laps for the fast guys to get to the front. So they arrive at a compromise about how many so you're inverting what, six? We're inverting three rows, and usually three rows are five. But the thing that even the guys that are the slowest cars do not want to start in the front because- They get run over. Yeah, they're inexperienced. So it's better for them to shag along in the back, get some speed up, and then take their turn as the ranks go up. Does this help you understand? Oh, well, yes. Because the real money and the points are in the feature. In the feature, yeah. You got to get there, and then it's all in line then. You got to get, so this process we're going through now is all working our way up to get to the feature, to do as well as you can in the feature. And after it's all over, you don't go on vacation, you go on to the next race. Yeah, we're going to the next race. How are you doing in the points so far? We're running second in points. We dropped out of a couple shows, of mechanical problems. But other than that, we're pretty content with where we're at. Well, folks, once again, this is another one of those fellas. I do the IRA uh, television commercials, and I do the IRA commercials on this thing. And I have said the name Kim Mock so many times, so I know who the top guys are, because these are the guys we talk about in the commercials. We wish you the best of luck tonight. We're going to move on through the pits and see what else we can find. So don't go away, folks. We're coming right back. Of course, in order to learn, we need to talk to the top drivers. The next one was mentioned by everyone as a potential winner. This man is one of the next runner-ups and his name is mentioned a lot. And what's your name, sir? Todd Dawn from Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin. Yeah. Okay, the girls are having a heck of a time here tonight. This is the first time they've been to a sprint car race, and it's wild and woolly here in the pits, isn't it? Oh, yes. You have to be careful and heads up all the time because of what? Uh, the, the hot tracks. Hot lane. Hot lane. The hot lane where the cars are coming through running, and they're trying to coast as fast as they can to get to their pits to get their temperatures, their tire pressures, and all the rest of it. Now, we talked to guys here tonight. Who's going to run up front? Everybody says you are, so you better tell us about it. Where are you in the point standing? Well, I'm currently fourth in the points right now. Uh, this year we've been struggling a little bit, but I hope we're going to be up to run tonight. Tell us about your car. It's a JB chassis powered by a Gertie engine. Uh, <laughs> Our audience, of course, is going to remember Gertie engines because we went down to uh, Gertie engines and did uh, two shows, uh, a building down there. 
and it's hard to believe you've never seen anything like it. It's like going into General Motors. They've got these thirty and thirty-five thousand uh, dollar small block all aluminum Chevys lined up like they're popcorn. Have you ever been down there? Yeah, I've been down there quite a few times. Uh, it's a big place. <laughs> spend a lot of money there. Well, you really can spend a lot of money. I'll tell you, how long have you been doing this? Uh, this is my eighth year. Uh, what did you start in? I ran a modified for one year, and then I went to sprint cars. Boy, heck of a jump. Uh, not too bad. Okay, where do you want to go ultimately? What, what's your plan? Uh, basically, we're doing what we like to do right now. If there's ever any, oh, you know, something we can fall into. Luda, you know I'm not going to accept that, right? No. You know, Irina, I don't accept that, do I? No. Michelle, I've got the question. I ask him, where do you want to go? Now, I want you to dream big. Remember, this. Does, I'm not going to charge you for this. If you want Jeff Gordon's seat, I want you to say so. If you want uh, a Formula One seat or an IndyCar seat, say, what are you looking for? What what, if great things happen for you, what would it be? I'd take Jeff Gordon's seat anytime. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? I think every, I kind of think everybody would like that. That'd be great. Okay, but for right now, you're real happy with the IRA. It, this, I'll tell you something, as I look around the pits, this is one first class operation. I haven't heard a moment downtime since we've been here. There's either packing the track, qualifying, something's been, apparently no dragging time. No, things move along pretty quick. You know, I try to keep things going, especially the weather tonight <laughs> ain't looking too good, so. Yeah, you're right, and don't talk about that. We don't want to talk about that. Uh, the other thing I was impressed with was how well organized the pits are, that they've got these stanchions lined up in there for push trucks on one side and sprint cars down the other side. It's not easy with these guys. We've explained to the audience that these cars, you can't stop once you're rolling, and if you pull them out of gear, you can't restart them. So when the guys come off the track hot, they want to try to coast to their pits, and they can be going pretty fast. It can be dangerous if it's not well organized. Yeah, it could be. But I think they do a real good job with it. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I want to wish you the best of luck. Now, is there anything we haven't said about your car or your effort that we should say? Well, I'd like to thank my sponsors, uh, SPM. They've been with me for about four years. Like, what are they? It's a machine shop in Buffalo Grove. Okay. Uh, Ricky's Greyhound in, and uh, Winker Engineering. He does a lot for me. Well, I'll tell you something. Without these sponsors, folks, Chuck, show the audience the car. Without these sponsors, and what I like about this, these are local sponsors. Without these local sponsors, we can't have local racing, can we? No, we can't. So we owe a debt of gratitude to these guys, and I encourage all of these small companies to get involved in motorsports. It's easy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> and, and we welcome them with open arms. Yeah, we, we just keep looking for them, though. You're exactly right. In fact, that's probably harder than quicker lap times. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for spending a little bit of time with us. Folks, once again, I think, I'm going to take a look now, but I think we're going to have to move our equipment to the infield because I think it's time for the action to start. Not quite it, Bill. We want to talk to one more driver. We are all done with the qualifying categories and now we were going to talk to the fastest guy but it's Donnie Gaten and we already talked to him so now we've got the third fastest guy and what's your name? Mike Ranke. And where are you from? I'm from Howard's Grove. And you qualified third, right? Yes I did. Oh great, well congratulations on that. And uh, we've got Phil here. Coming over. Okay, we had this all set up because we were going to talk to the fast qualifier, Donnie Gaden, or whoever the fast qualifier was. Turns out to be Donnie Gaden. We already talked to him. So I said, who's the second fast qualifier? They told me this fellow was. We spent 15 minutes dragging the camera all the way to this end of the pits. Chuck, broaden your shot, swing down, show the audience where we're coming from. And guess what? He got knocked off the second place. He ended up third. Yeah, we uh, actually couldn't hear anything, but uh, my wife just got back with the time trial results, and we, w we were third. Who was second fastest? I don't know, quite oh. honestly. Okay, now, is this a blessing or not to be the third fastest qualifier? Because they're going to invert the first, what, six rows? Uh, the first six cars, and it just depends if there's a couple of the, the fast qualifiers that don't make it. If first or second don't make it through their heats or the B, then, then it would jumble it up. It's kind of it's good for me because we'll start on the outside of the second row instead of on the inside of the third row. That would move me up just uh, one more spot. And, and wouldn't it be nice to be sixth fastest qualifier? Uh, it'd actually be good for me to be fifth fifth fastest because then I'd start on the outside of the front row and that's where I'm going to want to be. You you like the outside? Yes, I do. Okay, tell us about your car. Um, it's a '99 Maxim. Uh, it's a Sinclair 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 built race engine. It's a actually a shaver engine. Um, the parts that we have on it are all from Maxim or uh, bailing racing equipment. And I'd like to thank the money man is Pit Stop Pizza, and and Dietrich Trucking helps us out here and there. And uh, I also like to thank Super Shocks for giving us a good deal on the, the best shocks around. Okay, you you strike me as being very young. How old are you? 
I'm 27. Where do you want to go in racing? What's your ultimate objective? Um, I don't know if I'd really need to get out any any farther than sprint cars. I'd, I'd take any opportunity that came along as far as NASCAR or anything, but uh, I'd really like to take the sprint car out on the road. Let me give you three choices. Formula One world champion, win any of the 500 or win the Daytona 500, what do you like? I'd probably stick with the with the stock cars at Daytona. Okay. Well, listen, I want to wish you the best of luck, and uh, we're going to watch you on the start. What's your plan? Is it decide whether you're inside or outside? I'll be on the outside. Um, Maybe, depending on who makes it. And who no, does. the heat race is already lined up. I'll be on the outside of. The, and that's where you like to be. That's hopefully where the, where the good spot will be. So you're just going to hammer it. The plan is to pass everybody. Okay, my friend. Best of luck, and. Uh, Folks, I think it's time now to get started with the action. It sure is, Bell. Let's start by checking out a little random footage from the heats. Fine cars, getting ready to rock and roll in our first Yes, Michelle, this is just a little taste of heat number one action. 1M is our old friend, Kim Mock, and as you can see, sprint cars are wild. is very strong. Now watch as he passes the next guy underneath on the inside. I want you to check out the car on the outside as Kim goes by low. Very wild. We're going to skip heat number two for the moment. We'll get back to it later. Right now, let's take a peek at heat number three. That's number 19, Todd Dawn, and number 02, Mike Ranke, beginning to do battle. You met both of these guys earlier. They're both young, talented, and very fast. Now this is heat number four. Notice number 70, Raymond Hensley. You met him and his dad at the beginning of the show. Let's see how he looks in action. He looks very fast. It will be interesting to watch him in the feature. We sure hope this is whetting your appetite for the 2009 racing season. It will be here before you know it. The sprint cars are very cool. But before we get started with the B feature, we need to introduce ourselves. Hello, I'm Michelle Holly McAbee. I'm Irina Cody. And I'm Luda Kay. Now let's watch the start of the B future. That's IRA starter Dick Witt looking them over. Green flag. Number one Y, Scott Young jumps into an immediate lead. Boy, I do mean a lead. He is stretching it out, but good. Let's watch him work. I would love to see sprint cars run in person. I'll have to talk to Bill when the season opens. We've said so many times on Motorsports Unlimited, treat yourself. Attend all of these local rural racetracks. Someday they may not be here anymore. Don't miss a chance to experience the roots of American racing. That's Scott Young and 1Y out in front and flying. Let's see if he can get the win. is still well out in front. He has not had a serious challenger for the entire B feature. As a matter of fact, he's been the picture of perfection. Watch him work the corners and the straightaways here at the Dodge County Fairgrounds in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin, perfectly. Not even a slip. He looks very, very strong. Dodge County Fairgrounds in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. Tell me that isn't cool. He's approaching some back markets now, and this can always change everything. As a matter of fact, you can see that the sun is going down, it's getting darker, the track is changing, and of course, when you're going through traffic, anything can happen. Let's keep an eye out on this thing. It's not over until it's over. Picking his way through traffic very, very carefully, and bullet fast at the same time. Remember, that's 140 miles per hour on a radar gun on the straights. 
It looks like it's, it certainly is. It's all Scott Young for the win, for the win, checker flag. Scott Young made it look easy, but it wasn't. He was very fast. Now let's watch the traditional IRA for white salute to the fans before the main event. This is your field for 20 laps of racing here in the Outlaw Main. Here they come to the floor wreck. Send them on. On their way to a 20 lap feature in this. Here they come A wonderful way to spend a summer evening in the country. That's right, standing room only. You may have noticed that Mike Frost, number 88, was missing from the lineup. Earlier in the evening, he was involved in this incident. This is heat number two, and the car we're watching is number 88, driven by Mike Frost. And they're underway. Now we noticed a little bit, number 88, we were watching him carefully, of course, because we interviewed him earlier, you met him earlier, and we were watching him with some interest. He is, of course, one of the top drivers in the ARA, and, of course, that's going to pull our camera to it. But we were noticing as he came out of the corner, the car seemed to have some twitchiness to it. We're not quite sure what it is. The car kind of slides, and right there, right there, right there, just as the car uh, kind of hooks up and straightens out on the straightaway, there seemed to be some twitchiness to it, uh, almost like the chassis wasn't set quite right, or like the chassis was set and the, tra the track conditions uh, changed. In any event, it didn't seem quite right, but on the other hand, inside of a couple laps, uh, he was straightened out and flying. If you notice there, there was no twitch there, and we kind of uh, just kept watching him go, looking to see if it reoccurred again. Good coming out of that corner, don't see any problem there, so it might very well have been because he was in traffic earlier or because of the uh, portion of the racetrack that uh, he had to occupy because maybe where he wanted to be was already occupied. Uh, still, it was kind of strange uh, to see that uh, movement of the car, and once again, let's take a look as he comes out of turn number four again. Nice and smooth. No, no problems whatsoever there at all, and he is starting to uh, catch the pack now. see a very very nasty flip uh, it could have been a lot worse and I was watching carefully to see if that car twitched again prior to it happening and I can't really say that I saw it uh, it could also be that the car he was about to pass moved over slightly we really couldn't tell from the from the camera shot the good news of course is that Mike Frost was fine the bad news of course is that uh, the car is definitely not fine It was a nasty flip, but Mike was okay. Unfortunately, his car wasn't, and he was done for the night. Now it's showtime. Let's check out the start of the main event. Now Dawn will start from the inside of the front row of an IT car. Raymond Hensley, the feature winner, back in May, sits to the outside of that front row as they pick up the pace. On a turn four, and down looking for the great play.
everybody okay, but I'm very nervous. They start the race again. They come out of turn four, they'll look for the dual green flag, except they flip. the main event and look at Raymond Hensley on the outside going around the outside and taking a commanding lead right off the bat as a matter of fact it looks like he's got about he's got about a straightaway lead already and we haven't even completed one lap this is really remarkable he got a huge jump on the field couldn't have been better let's see if he's got anybody chasing him no no I don't think so he as a matter of fact does not have anybody chasing him and by now he has almost three quarters of a lap on the field Raymond Hesley is putting on a display the likes of which I have not seen in some time let's watch this man work prefers the outside line he is very fast and running up very close to the wall and has really got a hold of the racetrack uh, he's approaching cars now to start lapping already it's hard to believe we're only a couple of three laps into the event and he's already starting to approach some cars uh, that he's gonna have to lap and that means he will not have the line he'd like let's see if he's just as fast when that happens those three cars in rapid fashion up around the outside on the wall I'm not sure if he scraped the wall or not it sure looked like he did there for a moment maybe not but I don't think he did any damage and here we have another car it, it right by on the inside it doesn't make any difference apparently to Raymond tonight inside outside he takes him any place the hole is open he takes the hole and goes remarkable this is an absolutely remarkable performance remember ladies and gentlemen he is passing some of the finest sprint car drivers in the country right now this is the IRA main event and there's nobody slow out there astonished at the ease in which he is passing car after car after car. I've actually lost count here of how many cars he's gone by in just these few laps. of the other car high low doesn't seem to make any difference although he sure likes to go up to that high line he likes to run up against the wall and he is flying by these other cars I've just been handed a note that unofficially unofficially he has passed 13 cars in 13 laps absolutely unbelievable Don he's getting by now on the outside again. Now he's getting caught a little bit there. No, to the inside. Didn't even slow him down. Unbelievable. What a run tonight for Raymond Hensley. He is putting on a show. But look at this. Here comes Todd Don. Todd Don is going to have any of this. Getting crowded out there now. 
tapped on to the inside, but there's a caution. Uh, there's a caution flag out. There's a caution flag. Uh, we're going to have to restart this, and I think uh, Raymond Hensley will go to the front. Uh, Todd Don got by him and go reverse to the previous lap. Wow. Raymond Hensley is setting a torrid pace. In racing, however, as I understand it, a caution flag can change everything. Let's see what happens as they restart the main event. again Raymond Hensley out front and flying I thought by uh, the cars all being bunched up for the restart and I noticed that the, uh, the start of the IRA official starter Dick Witt watching him very very carefully to make sure nobody got a jump on the field it didn't make any difference to Raymond Hensley he's flat out flying just flying and no one is running with him what it's like when the car is working right, the chassis is working right, the tires are working right, the driver is driving right, the engine's working right. Just enjoy yourself, folks. This is what it looks like. Raymond Hensley is having a career night here at Dodge County Fairgrounds in Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. say here folks except to tell you that it's it's all Raymond Hensley tonight it's all number 70 Raymond Hensley he's having everything his own way unless something changes dramatically and I can't imagine what it would be it's going to be all Raymond Hensley remember the season will be starting before you know it get your stuff ready Checker flag, Raymond Hensley take home the money. A fantastic run by the Hensley team. Let's join them in Victory Circle. I cannot remember when I have seen a race so totally dominated by one guy. Honest folks, we were looking for other guys to put the camera on. The thing that was the most fun was watching him weave through traffic. What do you know that nobody else knows out there? I, I told you, I'm just having fun out here. Well, I can see why you're having fun. You're driving around the fastest guys in the country like they were standing still. How come so high? Was that the secret? I think it's just what I'm It didn't matter. I could put the car anywhere. It was going anywhere. Jeff Robinson, we thought about this a lot. He sets the car up. We got one good motor in here, and it just could do whatever it wanted to do. Okay, I want you to give all the thank yous you want to give. Thank your sponsors. Thank your I have, I have to thank my dad, my mom, Davon Automotive in Lake Villa, and Danny Green from Hometown Electric, Kenny from Quality Sales and Service, he helps us with our power supplies and events. I can see why you're proud of this young man. He's absolutely flying, and if you want to add anything to and what he said. Wolverine says, Blue Racer, the division of Crane Cam Company. They're the ones who designed our valve train for us, Wolverine Blue Racer. They did an excellent job. Well, I'm going to tell you something, Raymond, and by the way, if I didn't say it before, this is, of course, Raymond Hensley and his dad, Bill Hensley. You are to be absolutely congratulated. This is not an easy group to dominate, and you totally dominated, and you did it in a unique way, up against the wall, so close to the wall, I thought you scraped it a couple times. And he drove uh, clean. Pardon me? He drove clean. Oh, absolutely. No, no. Absolutely. I, you didn't get near anybody. Uh, it was really smooth. I had totally focused what I was doing. I wasn't ballistic, out of control. Felt like I could just do whatever I wanted to do with that car. But the fastest way was just to go around the top. You get more top speed that way. I just like to go fast. Well, I want to congratulate you. Uh, do they have a trophy over here? 
Hold on one second, tell them what you're giving them. Uh, the Wisconsin Fans for Auto Racing Club is donating all trophies to all the feature winners today. Okay, go right ahead. Congratulations, thank you. Well, once again, folks, here we are, Dodge County Fairgrounds, Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. The big IRA Sprint Car event totally dominated tonight by the Hensley family. They were great. A huge victory for the Hensley family. And Raymond wanted to add one more thank you. He couldn't do it without the support of his wife and children. He's quite a guy. Unfortunately, we're out of time with only enough left to acknowledge the fine work of our award-winning production team, including Chuck Itzenthaler, Sue Cassanda, Amy Fox, and John Papke. Special thanks to JBTV's Jerry Bryant. Music is created for us by Fireside Recording Studio in Westchester, Illinois, and by independent artist Roger Pauley and Jerry Herbert. Of course, we have to take a moment to thank the stars of this edition of Motorsports Unlimited, Irina Cody, Luda Kay, Michelle Holly Maccabee, and our host, Bill Wilt. As for me, I'm Mike McNamara, urging you to take advantage of the summer. Enjoy your local racetracks. Matter of fact, sometimes it's nice to take a ride to some of the further ones. It's fun to see something different. Think about it. Well, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Before we run out of time, we want to acknowledge the folks who made this updated episode of Motorsports Unlimited possible. Janine Lauschott, our webmaster Frank Barbales, Tom McGrady, Art Lauschott, Samantha Bentley, and me, I May Chin. This program made possible in part by support from Copy That, located in the County Farm Plaza at County Farm Road and Army Trail Road in Carroll Stream, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from J.C. Whitney & Company, located just off I-80 at the Utica exit in LaSalle, Illinois. Motorsports Unlimited is produced by Bill Wilt, president of the Motorsport Advancement Crusade. This program made possible in part by support from Jimmy's Red Hots, located on Grand Avenue and Pulaski Road in Chicago. This program made possible in part by support from ABC Auto Parts, located on Ashland Avenue at 138th Street in Blue Island, Illinois. This program made possible in part by support from Bridgestone Firestone and your local Bridgestone Firestone tire retailers. Motorsports Unlimited was created to raise public consciousness, understanding, and appreciation of the motorsport community and their activities. You can contact us by email at msutv.com or you can write to Motorsport, P.O. Box 66242, Chicago, Illinois, 60666. We enjoy hearing from our audience. Please let us know what you think. Next week on Motorsports Unlimited, we continue our effort to get you ready for the outdoor summer motorsport season. It'll be here before you know it, and we want you to be ready. The long winter months are coming to an end. We're going to help you get energized for the summer. Let's see. We push the racers this week. Perhaps next week it'll be the boaters or car show people. Tune in next week to Motorsports Unlimited and see what we decide. So that's it, another edition of Motorsports Unlimited and the lovely ladies of Motorsports. And be with us next week because we'll have something real exciting. Bill Wilt's going to have the lovely ladies and just about anything can happen right here on Motorsports Unlimited. Every week at this time, we bring you the best in motorsports. So uh, be seeing you. Bye-bye. And uh, keep on rocking.